friends and welcome back to Pursuit is Palmaji. Today we are here to discuss one of the important topic that is arterial blood gas analysis, also known as a short form EBG. Important tool used by all the doctors, irrespective of their specialization. So this forms a very important topic. Uh, used on a day to day basis, I can say even on a minute to minute basis by the interns, residents, and even practicing physicians. So I will be discussing regarding an ABG. It will be the part 1. Tomorrow I will be discussing regarding the part 2. I will be discussing it under the total 9 steps. In today's video, I will be discussing the first 4 steps. And in the tomorrow's video, I will be discussing the 5th to 9th step. So coming to the first step, it is checking the validity. Remember, before checking the validity, always important thing is to know the clinical history of a patient. Remember, whenever you are given an ABG, don't directly jump to interpret an ABG. Always ask for clinical history. Suppose, for example, someone comes and uh, gives uh, give me an, uh, gives me an ABG. Uh, come on, we we'll interpret this in ABG. I should always my first question should be: So, what is the clinical history of a patient? Once you receive the clinical history of a patient, then you should then you need to go for checking the validity of a ABG. So, why? What is validity? Validity is the one which uh, shows whether the ABG can can be interpreted or cannot be. So, that is the meaning of validity. So, how do you check it? We check it by using the simple formula that is hydrogen ions in the body H plus is equal to 24 into PCO2 by bicarb. Simple formula. Suppose this is the ABG given to you along with the clinical history. We substitute this value here 24 into by PCO2 is 37 and bicarb is 30. 24 into 37 by 30 is 30. So what do you do? You subtract you subtract this 30 from the universal number that is 80. Remember you subtract this 30 from the universal number 80. 80 minus 30 will be equal to 50. This 50 should be the last two digit post decimal of an ABG. Remember here pH is 7.50 and the value you have got is 50. So these two should coincide. Then it means that the ABG is valid. Suppose you get a bike. Uh, hydrogen ion value as 40. We have to subtract 80 minus 40, you get it as 40. The pH should be 7.40. Uh, plus or minus 2 uh, can happen, but most of the time it will be approximately equal. Remember, this is how you calculate the validity of an EBG. H plus science, 80 minus H plus science, you get a value, those values should be equal to the last two decimal point of a pH. If both are coinciding, then the EBG is valid, then go to the second step. The second step is to determine the pH. pH is the negative algorithm of H plus concentration as you all know it. Normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. We uh, take around roughly around 7.4. If pH is less than 7.35, we calculate, we set as an acidic. If pH is more than 7.45, we call it as basic. For all practical purpose, PCO2 normal value, we take it as 35 to 45. And by car, we take it as 22 to 28. So the cutoff value for PCO2 will be around 40. And for by car, it will be around 24. Remember 7.4, 40 and 24. These are three important values which you need to remember. Okay. Second, how to recognize what is the primary disorder? We have two things, primary disorder and secondary disorder. Primary is the one which is primarily involved. Second is the one which acts along with the second uh, primary disorder. So First important thing is to re uh, recognize the primary disorder. How do you recognize it? We recognize it by the direction of pH, PCO2 and bicarb. Remember the mnemonic ROME rho. It is respiratory opposite metabolic equal. So what does it mean? In cases of respiratory, everything will be in the opposite direction. In cases of metabolic, everything will be in the same or in the equal direction. Suppose in respiratory opposite, pH is high and PCO2 is low, then it is in respiratory alkalosis. If pH is low and PCO2 is high, then it is in respiratory acidosis. Got it? If pH is 7.1, for example, pH is 7.1 and PCO2 is 80, what does it mean? It is in respiratory acidosis because pH is low, PCO2 is high, then it is in respiratory acidosis. Remember it. Coming to the metabolic, if pH is high and bicarb is high, then it is a respiratory, then it is a metabolic alkalosis. If pH is low, 
and bicarb is low then it is a metabolic acidosis for example if ph is 7.15 and bicarb is 10 so what does it mean means here the ph is also low bicarb is also low both are in the same direction then it is a metabolic acidosis remember it r o m e respiratory opposite metabolic equal fourth step will be to calculate for the compensation so remember when there is a change in the pco2 that is there is a change in the respiratory system which is mainly given by the values of pco2 the body will try to compensate it by changing the bicarb that is through the kidney okay remember we have two important things pco2 and bicarb pco2 is mainly by the lung bicarb is mainly by the kidneys suppose you identify the primary disorder as a respiratory disorder so how do you check whether the body is compensating it or no correct how do you check it suppose if for every it is given by this table suppose for every 10 mm change in the pco2 from the baseline how much bicarb will change baseline will be 24 as i said if there is a 10 mm rise in pco2 in acute condition the bicarb will rise by 1 remember if, if there is a 10 mm rise in pco2 the bicarb will rise by 4 in cases of chronic condition means what does it mean in case of respiratory acidosis in case of acute respiratory acidosis in, uh, suppose in cases of a foreign body obstruction or a meconium aspiration the bicarb will uh, rise by 1 in cases of chronic respiratory acidosis, in cases of COPD, for every 10 mm rise in PCO2, the bicarb will rise by 4 because it is a chronic process. In cases of respiratory alkalosis, for every 10 mm fall in PCO2, the bicarb will, in cases of acute respiratory alkalosis, the bicarb will rise by 2. And in cases of chronic respiratory alkalosis, the bicarb will rise by 5. Remember, PCO and PCO2 rises bicarb will rise by 1 in cases of acute and 4 in cases of chronic if pco2 is falling by 10 bicarb will fall by 2 and in case of acute condition and by 5 in cases of chronic condition got it this is the case for respiratory disorder okay Coming to the metabolic, to, comp to no check for the compensation in case of metabolic disorders, we have two formulas for respiratory, for metabolic acidosis, sorry, for metabolic acidosis, the expected PCO2 is given by the formula 1.5 into bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 2. Got it? You will have bicarb in the EPG, substitute this here, we get a PCO2. If this PCO2 is equal to the uh, PCO2 which is given in the ABG, then it is well compensated. If it is, if the PCO2 is high or low, then there is a secondary uh, disorder which is present. Okay, remember it. In cases of metabolic alkalosis, if the expected PCO2 is equal to bicarb plus 50, suppose you are given an ABG in by, where the bicarb is around 10, you add 10 plus 15, it will be 25. So expected PCO2 should be 25. If PCO2 is more than 30, there is some amount of res secondary respiratory acidosis along with the primary metabolic alkalosis. If the PCO2, expected PCO2 is around 25 but the PCO2 in the ABG is around 10, it means there is some amount of secondary respiratory alkalosis going on. Okay, remember this. And one more important term or the statement which you should remember is, no amount of compensation will make the pH overshoot. Even if there is overshoot of the pH, then it is a mixed disorder. Remember this. Okay. So these are the first four steps. First is to check the validity. Second is to determine the pH. Third is to check what uh, is the primary disorder. And fourth will be to identify the compensation. So these are the first four steps. So this will be the end of today's topic. Tomorrow I will be discussing regarding the secondary disorder and how to identify the uh, anion gap and high anion gap metabolic acidosis, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. It will be followed by one or two examples. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all for patience. Listening. If you have any doubt, please leave it in the comment box. Okay. Fine. <laughs>